Welcome to Sex and Happiness with Lori Handlers. Amazing sex and intimacy are just around the corner. While Lori puts the finishing touches on her new book, Sex and Happiness Over 60, please enjoy this show. It's one of her favorites from the Sex and Happiness Archives. Did you ever wonder if you were involved as a sex educator, what your life might be like, especially if you had children? Today, we're going to be talking with somebody who does work in sacred sexuality. She does tantric work, tantric energy healings, and she's also a reverend. And she has involved at least one of her children in the work. I want to know how she told her children about it, and we're going to find out about that, like how you have a family and you also find yourself called to do sacred sexuality type work. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. My guest is Reverend Goddess Charmaine, and she's an ordained minister of interfaith theology in New York City. Charmaine is a Reiki master. She's a certified hypnotherapist. She's a trained aromatherapist, and she's a tantric energy specialist. And, of course, that's how she and I met. So welcome to the show, Reverend Goddess Charmaine. I'm thrilled to have you today. Thank you. Thank you for that. Yeah, and and we're also here with one of your children who's joining us on the show, Armaine, your son. And we're going to talk about how you work and sometimes how you work together and how it was to tell your family that you were initiated into goddesshood and you were called to bring sex and spirit together. So uh so tell me how did this how did this calling happen to you and 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 I mean like and you like me did you go, "Oh, how am I going to explain this <laughs> to whoever?" All right. So first I just want to say thank you for having us on the show and seeing the vision and the relationship between a woman goddess and her children and giving me and my son a chance to really share our story. And I appreciate my son because he's always – my kids, both of them see the goddess in me, but my son acknowledges the goddess also in his life and honors this work. Uh, but we, it wasn't always that easy. So, so when, uh, you say, when you say that Armaine acknowledges the goddess in his life, uh, what do you mean exactly? The divine the, the feminine. The goddess within him or the goddess in women, the goddess in all women? The goddess in all women and the goddess in him. He is in touch with his own divine feminine, his inner goddess. That's wonderful. That's just wonderful. So how did this happen to you? How, you know, backtrack a little bit and let me know how this happened to you and then how you went about explaining to the children and how many children do you have and do they all feel like Armaine does? You know, that's yes. pretty important, I think, for people to know. Okay. Well, um, for some reason, I've always known that I was the goddess of this land. So even when I was in my most dysfunctional state, I always kept saying to my kids, I'm the goddess of this land. So that word was floating around uh, for for years. And uh, one thing that occurred that kind of helped me as far as uh, it wasn't necessarily se- – it was sexual healing for me, but it not – in this sexual genital context, but after my marriage ended and I was uh, into meditation and healing and everything, I began a relationship with a man that was into Zen Buddhism and he was also a nudist. So he introduced me to the nudist lifestyle and we went to a really great nude beach that also had families there and children. So I began taking my children at a very small young age to the nude beach. I have a daughter and I have a son. And so at a very young age, nudity was not an issue for them on the beach to be naked and to and have fun on the beach. So that was the way that first started to bring about a, just a different way of looking at people. And at home, I became an at-home nudist, so the kids were kind of comfortable with me being naked at home. Um, we kind of evolved out of the beach when my daughter actually was turning 12 going 13 when she started going into adolescence then she started to view the body more of a sexual genital nature and uh, things started shifting on the beach and things that she was saying so we realized we need to take her take her off the beach so we started going to more clothes on beach 
until she could get a handle on the, uh, her sexual energy and how it was affecting others because people and men were following her on the nude beach, so we wanted to protect her. My right. son, Yes, yeah, so my son right. didn't have um, – he had fun no matter where we were, a closed beach or nude beach. But this started to bring in a different understanding and, and acceptance with my kids around uh, nudity. I became – uh-huh. Well, I have a couple questions for you, and, and plus you, rem- you were just reminding me of something. I, I once took my parents to a nude beach, and my father took his clothes off, and my mother wouldn't. <laughs> and <Yep. laughs> my, mother said, my mother said, I don't, you know – let them wonder. And I said, they're not even looking at you. Nobody's looking at you. The one thing that I remember about nude beaches is that people pretty much are not checking each other out. There's less um, sexuality, overt sexuality at the beach on nude beaches than there is on clothed beaches. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yes. Yes. People but I dress- imagine... I imagine for your daughter, it was very challenging to reach puberty and be, like, out there. Yes, yes. It so was. Thank you, thanks for respecting her in that way. Uh, maybe a lot, a lot of parents wouldn't let their egos, you know, if they thought they were right about something, they wouldn't let their egos change their, their minds. So how sensitive of you to, to change your game plan based on her requirements. Right. Well, thank you. Yeah, that was important because, uh, you know, you raise your kids, especially when you're healthy, to speak their mind and have a right to hope that someone would want to support their understanding. So we just took them to the clothes on beach and then my boyfriend and I would go to the clothing optional beach without her and take my son or not take my son and just, you know, and, and it, it worked itself out. And uh, but then coming into this work, though, you know, I, I wasn't all. I always knew I was goddess, and I spoke that way to my kids. But as I really started to become healthy and whole, um, I first was a surrogate in New York City. And I was one of the – I think I was probably the only African-American surrogate in Manhattan during that time in the early 90s. And the center I was with uh, became alternative. And I was already studying Tantra on my own with my boyfriend before my center became Tantric. But at that time, I was secretive about the nature of my work. Uh, with my friends and my family. And as I started to see the value and the, the lives that were being changed as being a substitute partner, uh, I, I gained more, I guess, faith and courage in the work to be able yeah. to share more of it. Yes, you know what I mean? I do know what you mean. I mean, I, I know exactly what you mean. It's uh, as you start to see the changes in yourself and how healing it is and how many people need sexual healing and some kind of a transformation that lives in the body not just in the head it's not it's not just a talk therapy i think uh as you you get more value out of it it becomes easier to talk i i didn't know what to say when i first started teaching tantra yeah (laughs) you know know? you know first of all just to be a nudist was already a trip with my friends and my family they were like okay you take the kids all right great you know <laughs> i love this <laughs> so uh so but then you know what really helped me then we became alternative and we all started studying a hypnosis and then i trained with the very woman i was reading margo Anand's books and i had the opportunity to be trained by her in new york and california in the 90s and as that was going on and i was also studying reiki and studying psychic development with alan seal uh, I started to hold on to my pussy and get this power in my heart, and it just everything became powerful and and possible through the sexual energy. And I went into seminary and also started counseling um, with a spiritual t- teacher, healer, to understand what was happening to me that it seemed like everything was sexual. And that's where I started to reveal who I was to my partner, who actually ended his relationship with me because of it. And actually came really? back. Really? Yeah, but he came back a year and a half later. And you know. is he with you now? No, we're not together now. Not together now. Right. But what? To talk about that a little bit because I, I talk about the breakup. Like you revealed yourself to him, who you had been on nude beaches with, who yes. he had been very open about his body, at least with your children. Yes. You know, and now you reveal to him that you're doing sex work. You're doing surrogacy. Which to, just say what surrogacy is too, because I can't I can't assume that everybody knows what you and I are talking about. Okay, surrogate means substitute. 
So I was a substitute sexual partner for people that had sexual uh, dysfunctions uh, related to either just functioning or, or emotionally, you know, where you would become their partner so that they could learn how to be with women when they would leave um, the session. And, you know, it took various shapes. It wasn't even just in technique, but it also was in hugging and holding and talking and dating and dancing. And it was just intense. So you, okay, thanks for saying that, because I think it's really important that people know what surrogacy is. And um, how, well, so you, so you, you revealed this to your partner and your partner breaks up with you? I mean. Yeah, see, the way it happened was I was a surrogate. I worked for this center I was with for six and a half years. I was a surrogate for three and a half years, evolved out of surrogacy. And as I became a tantric and a healer and went into seminary, there was no more, that, dishonesty and i couldn't hide yeah who i was and um and be authentic to my work so and my boyfriend knew that because once he had asked me if i was i always told everyone i was doing um meditation and some some light sensei touch and a camisole but i wouldn't go beyond that so everyone knew that much i felt like a little bit of truth was okay and i could try to get rid of the rest but he he asked me once was it was it more involved and i told him no but he knew once i was ordained that I could not lie to him. And so the day of my ordination, the evening after the reception of my ordination, we were home and relaxing. He said, I want to ask you a question. And he asked me, so all that time when you were surrogate, was it was did was sexual intercourse involved and in what was going on? And I said, yes. And uh, then he left that evening. And um, I said, but I stopped over three and a half years ago. That didn't matter to him. But at the same time, he taught me Tantra. We studied together, but he couldn't handle that part. You know, being a surrogate wasn't even Tantric yet. Being surrogate was just a substitute partner with a gift. Right. Uh, and after I was ordained and then I was seeing a spiritual counselor, because at this point, I, we are still going back and forth to California, New York, and studying with Margo Anand, and the center is expanding. And I became a spiritual counselor for the staff that worked, and I was doing body work for the surrogates that were working there. But then the goddess kept coming out of me where people were always telling me what was going on with them sexually um i was trained in reiki and then the energy was just bringing up all the sexual stuff and people was talking like this never leaves me why and i really was getting confused by it and a man saw me once a minister when i came out of the room he saw my aura he said wow look at you and this reverend georges counseled me for six months and helped me to understand how this sexual energy was working with me and it was truly goddess and from that oh. point could you just say something about what that means, really, the goddess energy? Uh, the goddess is also what we call the divine feminine. It is a creative principle that is part of us in our bodies as God and goddess. The goddess, through me, uh, is of a sexual vibration that can heal others to heal them sexually and spiritually. My particular, the goddess, when a person is saying that they are goddess or the goddess is in them they are saying that they are whole in their body and also in that body there is a line of consciousness that extends out of the body into the energy field around and the goddess is like the earth being that is connected to all life and so of that there is a vibration of inner fire and love and passion that we universally hold for all it sounds kind of, you know, it's really simple, but it is an acknowledgement of the oneness in me and the oneness in you through goddess. And my goddess actually happens to be of a love vibration, of a sexual vibration that is connected in my heart. And I work in that realm. I work in that shadow energy most of the time. So good. Okay, good. Thank you. Thanks for clarifying that. Because, you know, people... Sometimes when people say the goddess, someone doesn't know whether you're talking about Athena or Hera or, yes. you know, like an actual goddess. Or when you say the goddess, I yes. it's, it is the earth energy. Sexual energy is the vital life force. It is everything manifest yes. on the planet. Everything in the female, the divine feminine realm. But not everybody knows that. They just think of Greek or Roman goddesses or... Yes. Celtic yes. goddesses or something they're not really sure where to take that like what is she talking about yes yes you know so uh so that was that's great that you could clarify so the this person mentored you and had you it sounds like you were spinning a little bit 
Yeah, spinning because it's, it felt normal to, for these things to happen when I came and encountered others, which is what I believe scared my boyfriend. Even after we got back together, um, he understood this ability or this – he forgave the past deceit I, 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 when I lied to him. But as we got back together, there was no more lying. He knew who I was and what was happening. And then at this point, when I was counseled and we, we created the initiation that I had in 2000 to, to go into goddesshood, I told my kids – you know what was going on and uh because they they took part in a lot of the spiritual groups and meditations that i taught but they then i started to do this nude stuff and it was it was outside of the nude beach so they needed to i felt it was important for them to understand who i was who i believed i was and why i was doing this and when they were younger you know children are very they loved the mom you know they we went through a lot together they liked me better as this person than the the overweight uh sorry for a self person I was before they saw that change instantly but um th my son has always been kind of cool you know my daughter uh she was cool but the older she was getting she was like what naked with a group of people doing what and <laughs> <laughs> but at the same time she was my door girl checking everybody in taking the money telling everybody take off the shoes don't get naked yet <laughs> and, and then she, you know <laughs> And my son wants to peer in, but he's too young. He can't be in there just yet, you know. My, my daughter's the oldest. So they were kind of uh, excited, I think, in, in the beginning by what was happening in my life, not necessarily putting it into any kind of real sexual content. You know, it was more just like, wow, this look at, how, look at what's going on in our lives because a lot of different things were occurring through the way that we were praying and uh, we were doing energy work together as a family, readings. And, and then I started doing all this naked stuff. And right. so I gave them tantric books. My boyfriend is like watching me now we're back together. And I think what started happening was I became stronger sexually. So uh, he couldn't handle, he, he could accept it to a level, but it just seemed like, I think he was really afraid of how strong I was becoming and how I was kind of, without really knowing it, creating a following of people that just like to be around me. And I think part of him was very jealous and afraid of losing me if I continued to go into that space, which sure. I don't think he would have ever lost me. But I think that's why he started to say, don't do this. Don't do this anymore. Yeah. And then you can't yeah. be with that. You know? Yeah. That's yeah. suppression. And suppression would just take you back down the, the road you already had been once you opened up this door. Yes. There's no way that you or I or anybody who's tapped into this energy can go back. It was amazing to me and very sad to me because he was the one that introduced it to me. <laughs> I was like, God. And but my, So my kids are kind of chilling with the things that are going on. My mom is kind of trying to figure, what are you, naked, what, what? what are you doing? <laughs> and I'm, sure, I'm trying to explain to my brothers, and they're like, my brothers are thinking, are you waving the chicken bone around in this house? Why you, they're like try, No one can kind of get a grasp of what it is I'm talking about as my, my Orishas are coming in. My goddess, uh, one of my, you know, is, is, is Ochun. I'm a daughter of Ochun. And then my other energy is like a tree goddess spirit. And I'm dancing in all this celebration and telling my family and friends. And they're, my family is like, okay, all right. And then... My friends, some friends are ending their friendships with me because they don't believe in it, think I'm going to hell. So yeah, I, I just had that thought. I mean, I, I had a, if you hadn't said that, that would have been my next question. Has, have your friends and associates changed? Maybe you can't change your family, but your friends and associates have probably changed to, yes. um, to, to be more in tune with who you are now, and um, and I imagine that some of your old friends would have liked you to have not changed. That some yes. people in your life probably wanted you to stay fat. Yes. <laughs> yes. You know, it's unfortunate that that happens, but I, you know, I know it all too well. People don't like change, so when someone is changing into such a radical shift, like you're being naked with people in your house, they can't understand it. Most people are taught that our bodies are bad. Yep. That it, that it's sinful to be naked with anyone other than someone under the covers with the lights off. Right. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it's and it's you know and we had to you know I lost friends and I gained some amazing people in my life and most of the people that are very close to me now ninety percent of them came from my work and it's a, and they're like my soulmates and it's just it's been it's, this this lifestyle has given me so much more than I could have ever figured out. That yeah. Happen. Yeah. yeah. 
And well, let's see. Let's bring our our main yeah. in and see what it was like. Our main, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Thank you for Great. having me. Well, so what was it like for you watching your mother go through the? First of all, can you give us your age at this point? Oh yeah, I'm 20 years old. You're 20. And, okay. Um, yeah. Actually, the one thing I do remember um, that really brought me into understanding what, where mom's coming from was um, at a young age I had like uh, what was it called ADHD. I was like really moved. I had moved a lot, and I was like I was very active. And mom helped me focus. You know, like helped me meditate. And actually, like that was my that was my focus. Like she brought me into that space a lot as a child. And one thing that like that's the main bridge. For me to able to even in a sense how my mom said it to see the goddess in her because I was able to focus and kind of be in a good place and able to carry that with me. And when I saw mom in that work, I kind of just recognized that same intensity or kind of the same energy. Like I was like, hey, that's the same space my mom like puts me in, so I can actually be in a good place. And my mom's actually helping people with that same energy that helped me become a lot more focused person. So I recognize my mom is helping people as much as she helped me. So it was, it was, it actually just like made me feel a lot more happy for my mom because I knew she was helping people as well as like I knew how well she was helping them because she helped me. So when I, when she got, when, well, when she started doing the more of the explicit things and uh, everybody else and my kind of like my, uh, my friends, something like that, they, they were kind of like finding out and like how I, I was uh, like a part of it and, well, mainly. What I got affected by it was it didn't really like scar me. It was really like I was just I don't know why I was so relaxed about it actually because it didn't really like affect me that bad. I think yeah. more of the reason why I felt I should have been a little more affected by it, like in a, in a negative sense is because a lot of other people around me was like you're really not affected by it that bad. I mean, I'm like yeah, it's not that bad actually. Like my mom's helping people <laughs> with some things that most people can't really handle. And seeing how she's actually helping them, I see people leave a lot better. So I don't see it as a negative because I always see people coming out always better. So you didn't, people. I mean, you, this wasn't, so you didn't like get beaten up in school or anything or did Obviously you get, I mean, did anyone try to bully you because of this? No, not really. I, um, well, remember that time what happened at the school when they found my website and you went into class and they had my pictures up? Yeah, yeah, actually, yeah. That that one kid that actually found my mom's website like made me a little upset. Actually, like that someone was looking at it. And for yeah. a good point, that actually did affect me. Like the first time where, like, I didn't think of it as other people were looking at like my mom like that. But it wasn't that it was other people. It was mainly because it was that person that I knew the kind of person he was in it, okay. and it actually affected me on a level of like he was too young to understand what my mom was doing and he was taking it in the wrong context he was taking it into a different place than it should be and that, and I think that's why it really upset me not because of what my mother was doing more like what he was doing to my mother in his head that was that's why I got really upset about it actually right what did you do how did you resolve that well what we did was what happened was a friend had Originally, when I first began working on using my home line as my business line, I had my website and my outgoing message, and that's how the kid got my website. So what I did immediately was I bought Armaine a cell phone, and that was the only number that he would give out. And the school only used my phone uh, home line for, for just between me and the school. So then no kids that would ever call the house would ever hear my website again. And Armaine felt okay about that. And Armaine, how did you deal with that kid? Well, that kid, I talked to him. I was like, dude, it's it's all right. It's just like, it's, don't forget that that's my mother, you know. Um, I like me and him are really, are really we're good, really good friends at the time, so we had we had to like just talk it out and make sure that we were in good space together. And like I was just able to talk to him, just like, dude, we just got to get past this. It's all right, you know. My, like I know you think my mom's cute and everything, and you, you have that website. But like you're too young to be going going into that right now, and like I had to at least in some sense enlighten him into what he was really looking at. Like it's more, it's not just pictures of a mom, you know. It's she's helping people with their problems and everything. She's helping people right. with certain things that 
most people don't even know, especially around that age. He isn't. He didn't like. I don't think he even comprehend what I was trying to perceive, like tell him. But I about did the best way I could. About how old was, about how old was he and you at that time? Uh, how old was I? Um, you were you weren't in you were not in high school yet. So I would say thirteen. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. That, I mean, it's it's an amazing amount of maturity, Armin, that you are demonstrating here when you're talking about how you worked it out with this kid. I mean, it's just amazing. How has how's how has your sister dealt with it? How has your sister dealt with you know the fact that your mom is a sex educator, has been a surrogate, and people were hanging around naked in your house? Like I would say, I was uh, I took it a lot better than Arsha. I think Arsha understands it as well as I do, actually. And actually, Arsha understands a lot more than she puts off. That's the funny thing, because Arsha is somebody that's going to be re- like resisting the whole teaching of mom sometimes. But uh, when Arsha resisting it, it seems that it's it, like leaves such an impression on her that she's like re- more resilient with it. Like when some, sometimes when me and Arsha go to that space, like me and Arsha are able to actually connect spiritually and actually commune and Arsha hardly does that with a lot of people Arsha is very receptive I like she's definitely my my mother's daughter and it's it's it, it's uh it's an it's amazing but when my like I know my sister like as at certain points doesn't completely agree with everything that my mom is doing but in a sense like she she it's not gonna stop mom from doing this and she not the, she don't wouldn't be that person because my oh my sister is also someone that saw how my mom was helping people like we both saw this, and certain points where like if Arsha was uncomfortable about it she would talk to me about it and just say like uh, it's, it's like it's not really like I don't feel like it's good for us as as kids to be like have a mother that's like help, like really putting us in situations that like most people would perceive to be not safe for us. And I would tell Arsha, like, I know, but nothing as bad has ever come to us. It has only helped us grow. And we would, we would actually, like, talk about this. And I think, like, I know Mom and Arsha have talked about it. And I, I do know that me and, my, me and my sister have to talk about it a lot because Arsha needs to filter this. And I think Arsha she, finds, yeah? How, how, how much older than you, you is she? Um, oh, I'm 20. And for some reason I'm drawing a blank. How old is Arsha right now, Mom? 23. Yeah, she's twenty three. So she's three years older. Yeah. And I just you know, do you um Charmaine, do you feel that uh I mean, is I d I hate to put it like this, but I think sometimes like, you know, girl children have a investment in resisting their moms and boy children have an investment in not resisting their moms. I mean, how much <laughs> of this is, is just based on gender. Yes, it is. My daughter, um she she goes through phases, I think, sometimes where she's like, why does my mom have to be a goddess? She's <laughs> screaming and run out of the room, you know, and uh, because if she gets a little tired. She's like, I know you're my mom. You're not my goddess. You're my mom. I said, I know I'm still goddess. So I'm Reverend goddess, mother goddess, ghetto goddess. I'm always goddess. And that I said, and so you are a priestess. You are learning about this energy that you have and how to handle it. So she will yell that out in frustration sometimes. And then it's gotten pretty ugly to the point because, you know, listen, the first time Dyfus has been to my house a couple of times about hearing about my work. And um, my daughter, the first time it happened, my daughter came home from school and she said, Mom, my teacher asked, which parents are self-employed who own their own business? And my daughter raised her hand proudly. My mom is. And they said, okay, bring a business card. And she came home and said, mom, can I have one of your business cards? I said, sure, baby. I've got to give it to my teacher. I said, sure. She took <laughs> it to school, gave the card to the teacher. The teacher went to my website, said, oh, my God, this woman's a prostitute. Called the principal. They called uh, DIFUS, uh Children Protective Services, you know, and they went to the school and – pulled my daughter out of class and started asking her questions about me and she answered them and then uh, my daughter called me while I was actually getting prepared for a session and said oh ma these people were here asking me questions about you and your work I said okay baby that's all right thank you for letting me know and then um, I'm beginning my session my my client is there my doorbell rings and I go and answer the door and the woman says she's from Dyfus and she wants to come and talk to me about my work I said okay that's fine I said but I'm working now you need to make an appointment like everyone else and then oh, she said, good oh. for you. Yeah, I love so that. 
I scheduled her. I scheduled her for an appointment for probably a couple hours later. And she came over, and I showed her my website. I showed her my disclaimer. I showed her my CDs. I showed her and explained to her what I believed I was doing. And she wished she could see me for sessions, but she couldn't because of the way she met me. And then she, then that, it, you know, then they did the, the report, and they, she asked about my children had uh, health care, you know, who the doctors were and things like that and how they were living in the home. And then the, then it was dropped. So um, that's happened a few times. And my daughter sees, you know, at that time my daughter was actually stronger with it and proud of her mother. And as she gets older and she's been delving into her own body spirit as a woman and what that looks like in relationship to men, I think is where the challenge is. Then I got arrested uh, about three years ago in, in Woodridge. And that was a big thing for me and my kids. And uh, they really stood by their side with me. But at that point, though, when it hit the papers, and people were calling and reporters were calling and, uh, you know, and I was the most concern I had was for my son because he was the only person still left in school. And I was concerned about what the students in, were going to say to him. Right. And my son and my daughter were very supportive of me. My son held, had his held, had, held his head up. But my daughter and her, um, what happened, she was, I think this is really what started. She was going out with a boyfriend at the time that was not good for her. And he said some very cruel things about me. And then all of a sudden, it was like in her need to keep this boy, she started defending. She said, please don't say that about my mom. Instead of saying, who the f- do you think you are? And yeah, was, I understand. She, she wasn't yeah. strong enough. Well, and she started hey, reflecting. She was just this. blossoming. She was just blossoming. And girls, you know. Yeah, yeah. And they started to, to be sexual with boys and everything. And then she started saying really mean things to me about my work. And who I am because she, it was too overwhelming to hold the, the, the balance. And Armaine was the opposite. I didn't go completely to trial because the exposure of, uh, you know, it was in the papers, sexual healing goddess, prostitute arrested, alleged goddess arrested, all these things that were coming out. Um, my lawyer said that the more if I would push for trial, even though it seemed like it would be, uh, you know, there was a judge that wanted to write about church and state for me and my beliefs. And the thing would be, it would, it would stay in the papers. It might end up on TV. And I was concerned about my son. So, Listen, may- I, you know, through all of this, what's coming through, I just have to say what's coming through. You have this calling. You're doing amazing healing with people in the tri-state area, New York, New Jersey, and Pennsylvania. And, and uh, you... And you're a mother. Yes. And you're a caring, loving, amazingly powerful mother. And it's, and it's, so it's, so it's like you had to think about that first before you were going to like sort of fight for the defense. Like what was it, what kind of a mess was this going to make in your kids' lives? Exactly. An excellent question. So we did that. We shut, we, 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 we did what we had to do to keep from going to trial and, and I told my son and my, my daughter knew every step of the way what was going on. I had lots of conversation with my son and my daughter about their feelings while this was going on. And my, daughter, my son was amazingly grounded with it, even for me, I mean, more grounded than even I was. And, but we got through it fine. We had, we had some difficulties in other areas of things when I had to shut down my business for a while and then do what we need to do to take care of the family first. And then we, we healed from it. And then all this was, it seemed that like I became stronger and God, this was, it's, it's wild. It's just, I can't even explain the energy of it, but my children, my daughter, we're still doing the work. My daughter's still at the door checking everybody in, talking about, I don't want to see any giblets running around here while I'm trying to check people in. I'm like, Arsha, it's the lingam. It's not giblets. And she's like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then my son is coming to me, and I'm training my son in Reiki. We're doing this, you know, energy work together, and I'm starting my new services. And then all of a sudden, one day, my son says to me, he's going to, my daughter asked him to come to New York for a workshop I'm doing that evening to hang out with her, with one of my, my lingam intensives. And my son comes to hang out with my daughter, but then as people are coming into the room, he says, Mom, can, I feel like I really should be here tonight in this group. Because I was trying to teach my son the stuff that I was learning and teaching men, but, you know, he's my son. So, like, you know, last time I anointed my son's body was when he had his first gift, you know, when he turned, like, what, you 12 or 13 are main the first time. And I, he did, I did a bath ceremony for him. 
You need to uh, explain lingam, though, Steve, oh, because ling- yes. cause again, lingam is lingam is, yes. is our yes. terminology. Yes, so. yes. Lingam and yoni are the Sanskrit words for lingam is penis, yoni is vagina. And so uh, I did these rituals for my daughter and my son when they came of age uh, to honor their my daughter, her yoni, when she, when she first had her period. And my son, the first time he ejaculated, we did a bath ceremony, and I anointed his body and, and, and blessed him. What, was, what, what are those ceremonies like? You did a ritual bath? Yeah, well, for my daughter, it was, it was amazing. She got her period on December 8th, and it was a full moon, and it was my first goddess ritual that I was doing. So I'm in New York, and she's home, and she's gotten her period, and she knows it's exciting. So she's paging me. We didn't even have cell phones. She's paging me over and over again, and then she realized that she, I wasn't calling her back, so she paged me 911. And then I called her back. She says, Mom, I got my period. I said, great, great, great. I'll do an extra blessing prayer for you tonight during the service. And so what we did for her and another woman, a priestess friend of mine at the time, what we do for the, for the girl is we light candles in a circle. We all stand naked in the circle. We anoint her with oil over her feet, knees, sex center, heart, and lips. And we, stand, we go in a circle praying for her body and thanking her body and honoring her body. And we offer her gifts. And talk to her about being a woman. For my son, and she and she says something back, you know, whatever comes to her about honoring her body and, and, and taking care of it in that way. When my son, I remember telling him, okay, Armaine, you know, there's going to come a day when you're going to release out of your lingam ejaculation. like like the gift that you're going to be giving to people that you share pleasure with. So when that happens, let me know, okay? He's like, okay, mom. So I'm like waiting. I told him it's like I'm only 11 or 12, you know, I'm waiting. I'm like, anything happening yet? No, mom. Okay, a year will go by. I'm like, anything happening yet? Mom, I'll let you know. I promise. Okay. <laughs> I love this. So one day I'm on the computer minding my own business. And he comes to me. He goes, mom, it happened. I, I ejaculated today. I said, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Okay. I give him a hug. I start crying. I said, okay, okay I got to run the bath. And and you gotta take. I gotta run the bath. I put some oils in. You gotta take the bath, and then I I gotta do the ceremony for you. Okay, okay, mom. Okay, so I ran the bath, put some oil in it. Uh, probably at that what did I probably put lavender oil or ylang ylang something like that. And then he takes a bath. He bathes himself. I just ran the bath. Then he comes out. He dries his body. He wraps his body in a towel. He comes into the room that I had set with candles, and he lies. He first he stands in front of me and I bow to him and I do the five-fold kiss like I did for Arsha the, the, the feet the knees the sex center the heart and the lips uh, he keeps his towel on he sits on the floor I, I massage oil on his feet and on his legs and on his hands I clip his toenails I clip his hand nails and I, and I file them I talk about what it is to honor the man and to receive the gift of woman as we honor you as man and what his seed is here to do and how he's to give it to the person that he chooses. And that was basically, that was it. And then I thanked him for allowing me to initiate him in this way. And he kissed me, hugged me. And that was that. This is the sweetest piece. It is. This is so sweet. It's so honoring. It's so, I mean, it's I'm I'm blown away. <laughs> I just want to tell you I'm I'm blown away. I've had I've had nut jobs call me, you know, on the phone after I started teaching tantra to see if I would initiate their children or or um, or ha- actually initiate their children into sex. Yes. And I I said no I wouldn't do that. But I I, I you know you yes. can honor your children, but I'm not. I'm not going to do that. And I just think what you're talking about is sweet and um, just honoring, just such an honor, this anointing that you're talking about. Armin, can you remember that day? Yes, I can. Yeah. And it, how um, was it for you? It was, it was mainly, um, I felt I was mainly doing it, so what my mom asked me to tell her, and I was like, okay. I have, to, I have to let mom know because she wants to do a, a ritual for it. So, like mainly, I, I'm not I'm not embarrassed. I'm just it's just something that it was a part of the whole process and uh, like it, was, it helps me 
understand how my mom, how my mom kind of like respects such an act that I went through, like kind of put like an intensity on the idea, because I find there's something like at least something um, too chill about me that I'm I'm just like something happens, I, I just take it for what it is, and then. And when I go about, like, when I went about telling mom about it, I knew she was going to be very, uh, very happy. I just, like, just go crazy about it. So I just had to be able to be in my chill space so I won't be overwhelmed by my mom's energy. Like, it really <laughs> is when she's, she's really happy about something. So, like, yeah. I, was, I was happy to go through it. And I felt, I felt it helped me uh, gain a respect for what I was doing and, and actually put, put it in a, in a place that it was sacred that what happened was sacred for me, and I need to treat it as such and actually share it as, as what is sacred. I think that's one thing that helped me. Would you, say, would you say that you have, if we took you and your friends, let's say, and put, them, put you all next to each other, hmm. would you say you have a healthier sexual attitude or health, healthier sexuality than friends who don't go through rituals like this or don't know? I mean, it would seem to me you would, but I don't want to make that assumption. Well, in in a sense, I I believe to a degree. Um, I like when my friends are going through stuff when it comes to girls and everything. Uh, I I give them advice, um, and sometimes yeah, it, it does seem like they have their their perception of sex that's more accurate for their age. And um, everybody kind of like I, I I haven't I just I'm realizing this more and more every day that they as I started giving advice to them they kept coming back for it so. It just seemed like I do give a lot of advice about sex, and they they ask for it more and more. And I I stopped like just like you know like I, I would have people like you know anytime you need to ask me for something about advice or anything, just ask me. I stopped saying that, and like people just started coming to me even even though I like, mean for the first time, they just feel like they can ask me about it. And it's, uh, kids around my age, like they, I realize my friends are becoming more open because of. Uh, I feel like I'm the br- I'm a kind of a bridge for them to kind of see that uh, even kids around our age can tap into what whatever I'm tapping into in their eyes, and in a sense, yeah, they're, they're growing more when they're around when they're around me, and I bring, bring it up to them, and then they, they find their own avenue into it. They find that they can at least align them their, themselves like I did. Like I found my own teachers and aligned myself. So we 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 all help each other grow. Especially yeah, at our, our young ages. Yeah, well, it's uh, it's great. Your attitude about it is just great, so phenomenal. And obviously, your mom gave a lot of thought to this. <laughs> she gave a lot of maybe not thought, even thought is the right word. Maybe heart is the right word. Your your mom gave a lot of heart into your coming of age, and uh, there's something to be said about that. There's really something to be said about that. That's powerful and potent. Yeah. Well, when Armie, yeah. when Armie asked me that day in the city when Arsha was running the door, see, my daughter loves my work when she can get the money. She's cool with it then. I love my mama the goddess, you know, so I always loved her having her at the door. When Armie asked could he take part in my class that night, I was floored. I said, this class, the most explicit class, this one? He's like, yeah, I think it's time for me. I'm ready. And I said, well, I gave you the book. You just read the book. <laughs> you know, he's like, <laughs> I did read the book, Mom. <laughs> I want to take oh, the class. <laughs> I want to mention your book, by the way. You have a book, right? It's called The Sensuous Mystic, Uniting yes. Sex and Spirit. Yes. Where can people get that book? From my website, sensuousmystic.com. Sensuousmystic.com. I think we should spell that for people, Sensuous Mystic, because... So I'll just spell it out, S-E-N-S-U-O-U-S-M-Y-S-T-I-C, sensuousmystic.com, and there you will find the Reverend Goddess Charmaine. And if you're lucky enough to go to a session with her, you'll probably also meet her son, Armain, who has who has been wonderful to be our guests today. Yes. Uh, is there any... Anything else you'd like people to know? Anything else about reaching you or anything, any one tip that you could give? Okay, uh, just one tip is important to just allow yourself to thank your body for being with you all these years because your body is a holy temple. And when you thank your body and bless your body, you develop a healthier body spirit consciousness. And that can help you. 
That is so great. I do that every day. That is really wonderful. I bless my cells. I bless my body parts. I bless my whole body. So it's a wonderful, wonderful tip to give people. Well, both of you, the Reverend Goddess Charmaine and Armin, it's wonderful to have you. It was a very enlightening conversation about parents and children, a whole new breath of fresh air. So thank you both. Thank you. Thank you. Just a reminder that you can follow me on Facebook or Twitter, Laurie Handlers on Facebook or Twitter, or write me an email, any kind of mail, giving me feedback about the show, Laurie, L-A-U-R-I-E, at ButterflyWorkshops.com. See you next time.